Well, we just heard an awful lot about startups from Florian, and now we want to stop talking about startups and listen to them. We have a couple of startups here in the field of photonics. They are the very best ones out of 380 applications that we sifted through. These were the real standout business ideas. We're going to give them now two and a half minutes each on the stage to pitch you, our audience, as potential investors, perhaps, or just listening ears. And at the end, we'll see what you guys are made of. So let's bring up our very first startup in the field of Photonics 4.0. Please welcome from here in Germany, 8Tree. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, oh, that's great on the big stage today. Um, I'm the co-founder of Atri. Atri is a German-American company, so we, our office in Germany is in Konstanz, in southern Germany. We have currently five people. Uh, we are about three years old, and what we do is we help you and airlines to make uh, flying s uh, safer and cheaper. So how do we do that? We actually make a 3D scanner, and that 3D scanner helps the airlines to improve their uh, inspection process, their uh, maintenance process. And uh, this is a, a very cumbersome problem today. So what they have to do, they have to map all the damage on aircraft. And it happens all the time through basically four different problems. They have corrosion on the aircrafts. They have bird strike. They have uh, hail damage. And they have ground equipment bumping in the, in the uh, planes when they are on the ground. So our product helps them to make that mapping process much faster, about 85% faster than they currently do. And it's important to know that that costs them a lot of money. So dents in aircrafts are about $3 billion per year, which costs the airline to, to map these and repair these uh, problems. And uh, our product is patented. So we have a scanner that is battery powered. It's contained all in one box. It projects the uh, result right on the surface, which is actually a sort of augmented reality process. And uh, yeah, it's uh, currently evaluated by Boeing Airbus, and Airbus actually certified the product that we achieve the accuracy that we say that we have. And yeah, that's a bit, and that's about it. Please come see us on the photonic stage in booth number nine. And I'm happy to tell you more secrets about our product and what the name Atree is all about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Atree. You are under time, so we'll take a question from the audience. Who has a question for Atree? Don't be shy. This is your money he's after, investors. Here we go. It's a structured, yeah, good question. So it's a structured light scanner, and that is a proven technology uh, in the industry. It's uh, certified to plus minus 50 microns for the depths of the dent. Yep. All right, very good. Atri, thank you very much for your pitch. <laughs> Let's bring up our next startup from the UK, Bottle Technologies. Welcome to the innovation stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having us here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Well, so I would like you to imagine a phone that doesn't require a backlight to show you an image, okay. Okay, yeah. right? You see, when, you're, when you see an image in the backlight, it consumes more than 90% of your energy. Whereas, what if we completely remove that uh, power and you consume no energy in maintaining that image? Imagine you have windows which are smart enough to reflect infrared rays in winters. And in summers, they allow infrared rays coming in. So you, have, you save on your... Uh, uh, Heating in winters, you save on your air conditioning in, win uh, in summers. Now imagine you don't like the appearance of your room, and uh, you just with a flick of a switch, you change it, uh, you just change the amount of color, amount of light coming in, you make it dim, you make it dark, you make it of different color. Now that's all a rosy picture, but this is possible. And that's what we do at Bottle Technologies. We manipulate light. This research was published in uh, the journal Nature in 2014, where uh, this revolutionary ultra-thin devices have been described, which can manipulate light by, electronic, by an electrical excitation, or optical, or a mechanical excitation. These devices can uh, steer, filter, or dim light by the flick of a switch. And most importantly, it does not consume any energy once the switching is completed. 
So we are a startup, uh, we spin off from the University of uh, Oxford in uh, December last year. We have uh, a group of uh, 11 people at the moment, and we are growing quite fast. So hopefully in the, in the coming few months, we'll come up with our first prototype uh, in, our display, uh, in our display application. We are also looking at uh, smart windows and glazing and uh, security applications, completely funded by the local VCs at the moment. But if you have any interest, suggestions, advice, uh, or you know, if you have technical questions about the technology, please uh, feel free to drop by uh, at, the, at our desk in Photonics. Or uh, if you have questions here, I'll be happy to answer that. Thank you. Thank you. Who has a question for Bottle Technologies? Go ahead, sir. Highest potential application for those right. of you in the back. Okay, um, so we're working. Uh, so the display companies are the first to come to us, and our first prototype is going to be display. Uh, but we are very focused and very determined to go into glazing uh, as well. We know that we will be able to do it. At the moment, we just lack manpower. So once once our uh, this display project is done, we'll uh, focus to displaying as soon as possible. All right, I think we have time for one more. Nobody? Everybody is ready to get out their checkbook and write a check. You don't have anything else you want to know before you sign on the dotted line. You're off the hook, my friend. Let's bring up our next startup. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Battle Technologies. Our next startup in the field of Photonics 4.0 is Fauna Photonics from Copenhagen. A long trip for you. Welcome. Yeah, that'd be nice. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Frederick Tornhoy from Fauna Photonics. I'm one of the co-founders, one of three Danish founders of a company that's bringing laser sharp solutions into the field of biological object monitoring. The main problem we're trying to solve is that today there are no efficient processes for detecting and monitoring insects in fields like agriculture and vector-borne diseases. Everything is being done completely manually. This has been unchanged for 60 to 70 years. If you're a farmer, you're seeing your fields being attacked by insects. In some cases, 80% of your crops that are completely damaged. This is causing very, very big economic losses. We've looked a lot at the US market. Every year, 15% of crops are completely damaged by insect uh, attacks. This equates to $20 billion of losses. And to be able to control this problem, $4.5 billion is spent on ins insecticides to combat this. So how are we going to tackle this problem? There are basically two ways you can do it. You can improve monitoring, and you can improve control. And control has been developed over many, many years. It's been perfected with the most advanced chemicals. But if you look at surveillance solutions, nothing has happened for 60 to 70 years. This is what we're working to tackle. It's a very, very big issue, and it's a, it's a, it's a solution or a problem that really requires a very, very good solution. Already now, we have four very talented engineers, nano-optics specialists, LIDAR, biophysics, and we're putting together a very diverse team that all fight to create a better solution for this. We have a lot of attention from the crop science industry. Uh, the, these big players that are working to find new revenue streams, aside from selling chemicals, going into digital farming solutions, creating new software solutions. But these companies, they are looking for the next big sensor that can get the right data and remove the bottleneck of inefficient data collection with these manual solutions. This is where we come in. We have two patents pending. We have a very, very proficient board of directors consisting of serial entrepreneurs supporting our, our efforts to bring this solution forward. And we have uh, um, shortly a uh, 1.2 million euro deal, a uh, partnership to, to, to start testing our solutions in field and bringing us to this to the product stage. Thank you very much. Who has a question for Fauna Tonics? Keep that, keep that. 
Here we go in the front row. So thank you. Te technically, how has it been done, the monitoring? How, how are you attacking it? Uh, how it's done today? Or how do we do it? Um, so our solution is a LiDAR solution. So we, pre we send light into the atmosphere, into the air, and we analyze the backscattered signal from that, from that instrument. So it's basically a, a light transmitter and a sensor in one solution. It's a LiDAR system. It's not a time of flight system. It's a Scheinflug system using continuous wave diode lasers and line scan sensors. Uh, yeah, so it's an automatic solution. It's pretty advanced compared to what is used, being used today, which are basically traps like this. <laughs> <laughs> It attracts an insect, and you have to go and look at it. Ooh, that was a mosquito. <laughs> I'm sure our Red Bull sponsors appreciate that little demonstration. <laughs> thank you very much, Phonotonics, for Thanks. your pitch. And thank you for all of our startups. Let's bring up our next startup in the field of photonics, IOXP. Welcome to the innovation stage. Two and a half minutes on the clock. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, one very important use case um, for augmented reality, even the founding use case when the very concept of augmented reality was proposed in the 90s, is assisting service technicians, manufacturing workers, or maintenance workers through work processes in a step-by-step -step manner interactively. And still until today, um, this use case severely suffers from the content creation problem. So you've probably seen lots of um, shiny AR demos at uh, various exhibitions or industrial fairs. But what you haven't seen is um, that a, a probably large team of interdisciplinary experts handcrafted those demos that you've seen on stage. What we do is basically we, we have created a system that learns manual workflows from, uh, from observation. So the idea is that whenever a worker encounters a problem for the first time, he simply records the steps of his or her solution. And our system, using machine learning and artificial intelligence, breaks this recording down into the single work steps, analyzes each and every uh, work step on the, on the single task goal, so it can understand what was manipulated in a task, was a part extracted, inserted, manipulated with, and automatically builds a process model of a work process and puts that into a database. So what we can do with the click of a button then is uh, we can output this model in form of a process graph for review, um, in form of a traditional paper-based manual, and in form of an uh, interactive assistance system that guides the worker through. And since our system has a, has a proper understanding of, of the single task goals, it even can detect basic errors. So when the task was uh, done incorrectly, warn the user, and validate each step in real time, which has a tremendously important application uh, whenever quality is a crucial factor, most particularly in production use cases. Um, yeah, so we think it's, it's um, basically the, the most advanced documentation system that is currently available. I dare you all to look for yourself. It's, um, we have a live demo here, which you can just try out and um, see for yourself. Thanks. XP, a question from the audience. Are potential investors? Nope, everything was completely self-explanatory. They're satisfied, they're ready to invest. Great job. Thanks. All right, we've got one more startup, and that is LightFab. Welcome to the innovation stage, LightFab. You're the last, good luck. Thank you, you're so kind. <laughs> Hello, LightFab is in Aachen, and we do fabrication with laser light. What we do is 3D printing, and we do a new thing with it, that is 3D printing of glass, quartz glass. Very stable, high temperature resistant, transparent material with a lot of new applications. And what, bring, what we bring new to this 3D printing field is very high precision, unknown up to now. We can make it with one micrometer precision. So if your metal 3D part is not precise enough, consider fused silica glass as a very good mechanical substitute for that. And the third revolution is we can scale this process. So with the same process, we can make 3D printing also uh, useful for mass production. 
During our university time, we demonstrated that the process can be scaled by moving faster with high power femtosecond lasers to make those structures possible. And now we are in, um, able to do the same 3D printing also in huge um, quantity. That uh, also gives us the possibility to sell the first prototype because often you don't want to have the first prototype if there's no um, future goal possible that you can achieve it in um, large quantity. So what we have as a special innovation is that we make a special focusing system to make tiny focus for precise structuring and speed that up with special very high scanning modules. And our business case is we sell you the prototype, we sell you the series production, we sell you the machine, the 3D printer, and we make a special high-speed production machine and integrate it into your production line in case you are satisfied with the testing of the outcome. And typical markets are very broad as typical in 3D printing. First, we thought biology, medicine would be the market to go because they need transparent things like microfluidics. We made a cell sorter for quick antibiotic resistance tests, for example, and then figured out yeah, they need maybe three to five years to complete that test in medical. So what to do in the meantime? We can sell some prototypes and series to them, but real products now are totally different. So we sell parts for automotive, like inkjet printing and diesel injection nozzles. We sell to oil industry, microfluidics, like artificial sand, but also electronics, chemistry, and other kinds. So what we need for uh, money for right now is up to now, we are three years out without any investors, just by earning money from selling things. And now we would like to grow rapidly and need more marketing and the sales um, department and also go to USA and China where the electronics is made. Okay. And we need help for that. I have to Thank stop you. you there. We're over time. Quick, Sorry. that's okay. Quick question from the audience. Does anyone want to ask Lightfab a question about their technology, their business model, where they're going after? Here you go. Uh, how does it work? Is it active or uh, abrasive? This is subtractive. Can we get his mic back on? Thanks. Try again. This is subtractive 3D printing. Subtractive so 3D printing. It's not additive, it's subtractive. That gives you more design freedom. You don't need any support structures. Much higher quality. That's the secret behind that. All right, thanks for sharing your secrets with us today on the innovation stage, and thank you to all of our startups. A big round for everyone who got up here to pitch.